In this episode of the FXDM educational series, we're going to be taking a closer look at trading gold and oil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down gold over here and then we'll write oil over here and something that I find to be very useful, very helpful in understanding how these two relate to the dollar and so forth is to actually compare them to the dollar as if they were a currency pair. So as if we were looking at the euro dollar currency pair or something like that. So here I have the dollar of course over on the quote side of this pair. Now let's imagine, so let's put a quote up there. So let's imagine that gold is currently trading for a thousand dollars an ounce and perhaps an investor thinks that gold is actually going to improve in value. All right, and what if uh, oil and here we'll say Brent crude is currently priced at $40 even. So $40 even per barrel and an investor thinks that uh, prices in the oil market are actually going to go down. Well, in order to understand what that actually means to a trader who's taken a position here, what we need to know is, well, how large, what's the size over here on the base? So in the case of gold, this is 100 ounces for a full lot. And in the case of oil, it's 1,000 barrels. So what that means is that if oil, for instance, if it were to go from $40, let's say, to and it's just going to move one penny. So it's going to move to $39.99 a barrel. So it has it dropped by one penny. Well, one penny times a thousand units over here on the base side means that that move would be in favor of the short side to the tune of $10 per lot. So, or of course, adverse to the long side for a $10. Now over here, if uh, let's say, for example, that oil, that gold prices has actually improved in value to $1,000.01. So it's actually gone up a little bit. Well, we would take that one cent times 100 ounces. So that means that that improvement is actually worth to the long side $1 or to the short side, it would be adverse to the tune of $1. Now, as you might imagine, gold and oil prices are gonna have a certain amount of correlation with other major currency pairs, particularly those that are crossed with the dollar. And in some cases, it will have actually a fairly tight correlation with the currency pairs, particularly commodity currency pairs. In fact, let's take a look at a couple of charts here where we'll compare the price of gold versus the dollar to the euro dollar exchange rate. And we'll contrast the price of oil to the dollar with the Australian dollar to the US dollar exchange rate. So here you can see a comparison between the CFD for Brent crude oil CFD stands for contract for difference. It's essentially, you could think about it as an agreement between the buyer and the seller to exchange the net value difference at the end of the trade. So for example, if the price has gone up then the long side is going to get paid and the short side is going to do the paying. Or if the value has gone down, of course, then the short side is going to be paid and the long side is going to be doing the paying. Well, you can see it here compared to the value of the Australian dollar to the US dollar, and these are hourly charts. As the oil price is going up or down, the price of the Australian dollar to the US dollar is also going up or down. So they are very correlated. Now, similarly, there is a tight correlation because they're both contrasted with the dollar between the gold to the dollar, which here I have it as the symbol XAU to the US dollar, and the euro to the US dollar. Because the US dollar is, of course, the quote in both cases, they are gonna share a certain amount of correlation just automatically, but they will differ a little bit and we can take advantage of the reasons why they may differ in some trading strategies that we're gonna discuss later in the video. Now, taking advantage of trading opportunities in either gold or in oil prices is very similar to uh, trading another currency pair from a technical perspective. But from a fundamental perspective, there are a couple of differences, mostly in the way that a particular economic announcement may have a more pronounced effect on the price of oil or the price of gold than it would even on potentially a commodity currency. So there are a couple of key economic reports that I would suggest watching as you start to do some fundamental analysis on either of these two markets. So with oil, every month we do get a statement from OPEC and it can have a fairly significant impact on the price of oil because it helps us to understand a little bit more about where OPEC is trying to head with supply concerns so, and so forth. So where are they trying to steer the price? Now I have an example of this here on a chart that we're gonna to get to in just a second. In the case of gold, it can be very uh, sensitive to the, to the rate of inflation 
Now, inflation is not just a function of what is the actual change in, let's say, a basket of consumer goods or producer price inflation or something like that. But oftentimes a leading indicator for inflation are economic growth indicators, in particular, industrial production numbers. If industrial production numbers are going up, then we look at that as a leading indicator that inflation, let's say, for example, in the United States, is also going to go up. That may increase the value of gold because intrinsically it may hurt the value of the dollar a little bit. And of course, gold is a short term safe haven against the risks of inflation. Well, by the same token, of course, if industrial production, even worldwide, not just in the US, of course, but worldwide is beginning to contract, well, usually that's associated with fairly low levels of inflation or potentially even disinflation. So those factors would tend to be bad for gold. They may or may not be good for the dollar, but because they're bad for gold, we can infer that that would then send the pair here between gold and the US dollar to the downside. So let's take a look at a couple of examples where we can get into a little bit more detail in the relationship between some of these fundamentals and what's actually going on in the chart between gold and the US dollar or oil and the US dollar. So let's start with gold. I think this one is a very interesting example. In about the middle of April, about April 12th, 2013, the Fed was actually preparing for an FOMC announcement that was coming up. And production numbers in the US and China were both pointing towards lower inflation because production levels were contracting a little bit. Now, as you can see, during that period of time, gold really tanked. So it dropped very, very quickly. Subsequently, at the end of April, the, the, in fact, the last day of April, the first day of May in 2013, we had the two-day FOMC meeting. So no easing, no additional easing initiatives were announced at that point, and gold topped out again and began to decline. So investors were looking at that as indicating that there really weren't a lot of short-term sources for inflation, either from industrial production or from the Fed engaging in additional quantitative easing. Finally, we go all the way out here to the middle of June. This is again in 2013, June 18th and the 19th. This is another FOMC meeting. So there was no additional guidance that the Fed would be stepping back into the market again. And in fact, they had already been hinting in May that it was time to start tapering the current round of quantitative easing that was in play. So, and it, once again, as you can see here, the value of gold declined because in the short term, investors were expecting that inflation would be fairly muted. Now let's take a look at a shorter term example on Brent crude prices. So you can see here, this is the beginning of December. We're looking at an hourly chart right now. So this is the 4th of December, 2015, where OPEC was due to host their press conference after the OPEC meeting. So this is a little bit different than the monthly report that I mentioned, but these are also scheduled in advance. So we know more or less when this is going to happen. Well, at the time, they did not announce any restriction to supply. So they were not going to be cutting the quotas or the amount of oil that they were going to be pumping from the petroleum exporting countries that are members of OPEC. So, of course, if you're not going to constrain supply and the trend had already been relatively negative, then the price is probably going to continue to decline, which in this case, they made that announcement at the same time, again, on the hourly charts, where oil was coming back up to a previous high. So it was bumping up against a resistance level, and sure enough, it began to decline. This presented an ideal opportunity for an investor to get direct exposure to the oil market based on fundamentals that were indicating the prices were going to continue to fall. Although there are similarities in the way that gold prices and oil prices move compared to currency pairs, there are also some differences. This gives investors new opportunities and new trends to take advantage of out there in the financial markets.